Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join us today because today is a very special day. Every once in a while when we get him off the road from teaching classes, I bring my son Steve in here and let him give you a demonstration. Steve's been painting since he was about 12 years old, and I think you'll find he's absolutely fantastic. Steve, welcome to the show today. Thanks, Dan. Tell you what, I'm going to turn it over to Steve, and I'll see you later. Son, do a nice painting for everyone. In the art world, few folks are as beloved and as iconic as Bob Ross. With his soothing voice, trademark afro, and happy little trees, he captured the hearts of millions. But behind the canvas, a dark secret lurked, waiting to be revealed. Now, 30 years after his untimely death, Bob Ross's son Steve is breaking the silence. The Humble Rise of a Cultural Icon Bob Ross, the iconic painter known for his soothing voice, permed hair, and happy little trees, was born Robert Norman Ross on October 29, 1942, in Daytona Beach, Florida. Growing up, Bob found solace in his father's carpentry workshop, preferring the hands-on experience to the confines of a classroom. His artistic inclinations led him to drop out of school in the ninth grade to work as his father's apprentice. However, his life took an unexpected turn when, at age 18, he enlisted in the U.S. Air Force. For the next 20 years, Bob served in the military, primarily stationed in Fairbanks, Alaska. As a drill sergeant, he found himself in a role that contradicted his gentle nature. The daily task of yelling at young recruits took a toll on Bob, as he yearned for a creative outlet to calm his mind after long, stressful days. It was during this time that he discovered painting, a hobby that would eventually become his life's passion and legacy. Under the tutelage of a painter named William Alexander, Bob Ross honed his skills on the wet-on-wet -wet technique, a method that involved rapidly applying layers of oil paint on top of each other without waiting for the previous layers to dry. With practice and dedication, Bob became a master of this technique, able to create stunning landscapes in under 30 minutes. His talent caught the eye of many and soon, an opportunity presented itself that would change the course of his life. On January 11, 1983, The Joy of Painting premiered on public television. The show featured Bob Ross creating beautiful landscapes while sharing his gentle wisdom and encouraging viewers to embrace their creativity. His soft-spoken demeanor and ability to make painting accessible to everyone quickly made him a beloved figure. Despite his growing fame, Bob remained humble and grounded, often dedicating his time to caring for injured animals including deer, squirrels, foxes, and owls. As his popularity soared, his influence extended beyond the television screen. He launched a line of art supplies bearing his name, including brushes, paints, and easels, allowing aspiring artists to follow in his footsteps. By 1995, the Bob Ross empire was worth over $15 million, a testament to the impact of a man who started as a humble carpenter's apprentice and became a cultural icon. Steve Ross discussed his father's gentle persona on the show compared to real life, saying, quote, He wasn't actually quite that soft-spoken in real life, it was almost a voice whisper on the show, and they had to turn the volume all the way up. A legacy cut short. As Bob Ross's star continued to rise, his health began to decline. The once energetic and vibrant painter, who always seemed to embody the essence of vitality, found himself facing a series of challenges that would ultimately prove insurmountable. In the early 90s, Bob suffered two heart attacks a testament to the tolls that years of smoking had taken on his body. Yet even in the face of these setbacks, he remained optimistic. However, in 1994, he received a devastating diagnosis, lymphoma, a rare and aggressive form of cancer. The news came as a shock to fans who had grown accustomed to seeing the seemingly indestructible artist grace their television screens each week. Despite his illness, Bob refused to let his condition define him. He continued to film the joy of painting, pouring his heart and soul into every brushstroke, even as his body grew weaker with each passing day. Viewers who tuned into the final episode of the show's 31st season might have noticed a change in the once robust painter. Bob appeared frail and tired, his signature perm thinning and his voice losing some of its characteristic smoothness. 
Yet even in his diminished state, he exuded the same warmth and kindness that endeared him to millions of fans around the world. But behind the scenes, Bob was grappling with more than just his physical health. He had always harbored a sense that he might not live to see old age, a feeling that had only intensified as he battled cancer. Determined to ensure his legacy would endure, he began to make final preparations for the future of his company, Bob Ross, Inc. He never could have imagined these very preparations would sow the seeds of discord and strife that would plague his family for years to come. As his condition worsened, he retreated to his estate in Orlando, Florida, no longer able to spend long hours in the studio in Muncie, Indiana. He found himself too weak to hold a paintbrush. On July 4, 1995, surrounded by a small group of family and friends, Bob took his final breath. He was only 52. The Bitter Battle Over Bob's Empire As Bob's life came to an end, a new chapter unfolded. Unbeknownst to his many adoring fans, the beloved painter's final days were marred by a bitter legal battle over the future of his multi-million dollar empire. At the heart of the conflict were Annette and Walt Kowalski, his longtime business partners who had played a crucial role in his rise to fame. The seeds of discord had been sown years earlier in 1992 when Bob's second wife Jane passed away from cancer. As one of the four owners of Bob Ross Inc., Jane's death had a significant impact on the company's ownership structure. Her share was divided between Bob and the Kowalskis, giving the latter a controlling interest in the business. As Bob's own health declined, the Kowalskis began to make their move. They wanted the painter to relinquish his remaining stake in the company, a demand that Bob, even in his weakened state, refused to accept. The once close relationship between the partners deteriorated rapidly, with heated arguments and legal threats exchanged in the months leading up to Bob's death. The situation came to a head just days before Bob filmed his final episode of The Joy of Painting. Walt Kowalski left an ominous message for the ailing painter, a thinly veiled threat couched in legal jargon. The Kowalskis were determined to wrest control of Bob's name, likeness, and intellectual property from the man who had built the empire from the ground up. Even as he lay on his deathbed, though, he made a series of last-minute changes to his will, hoping to secure his legacy for his family. He stripped Annette of her right to administer his estate, instead handing control to his son Steve. Additionally, he bequeathed his share of the company to his third wife Linda, whom he'd married in a private ceremony just weeks before his passing. These 11th hour maneuvers set the stage for a protracted legal battle that would consume the Ross family for years. The Kowalskis, determined to maintain their grip on the empire they had helped build, launched a relentless campaign to challenge Bob's final wishes. As the conflict played out in courtrooms and boardrooms, Bob's son Steve found himself at the center of the storm. He embarked on a quest for justice that would span decades. Recounting the phone call he received from Annette Kowalski shortly after his father's death, Steve said, quote, Annette called me two days after my dad died, and she said, I want you to listen to me carefully. Any Bob Ross art products, anything related to art or painting, you can never ever make those, distribute those, create a business around those, nothing. Seeking Justice 30 Years Later In 2021, three decades after Bob's untimely death, Steve finally had the opportunity to share his story with the world. The Netflix documentary Bob Ross, Happy Accidents, Betrayal, and Greed provided a platform for the younger Ross to reveal the truth behind the bitter legal battle that had consumed his life. For Steve, the documentary represented a long overdue opportunity to set the record straight. He spoke candidly about his father's intentions, the changes made to his will, and the Kowalskis' relentless efforts to seize control. Now it's time to hear from you. Did you ever watch The Joy of Painting with Bob Ross? Did you ever try to paint along with him? Let us know in the comments section below.